Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be creating a puzzle game. So you can see we have a five by five board and we have 25 images. And the goal of the game is to drag and drop these images onto the board so that we can create the original image. So for instance, I can take this piece and place it here and you can see the turns increment by one. So the goal is to complete the image in the fewest turns possible. In this case, because we have 25 images, the fastest way is to uh, use 25 turns. And if you place an image like this, the turns increment, and if you swap, you can swap existing pieces on the board like this. The turns also increment by one. And we can also swap from an image in our pieces pile with ones already on the board like this. So that will also cost a turn. And every time you refresh uh, the screen, you can see the ordering is different. So it makes the game a little challenging. And the original image is this picture of a movie called Avengers Endgame. I'm not sure if you've seen the movie, but if you have not seen the movie, uh, you should definitely check it out. It's a pretty fun movie to watch. So yeah, let's begin with the tutorial. And before we begin, I just want to mention that I am working on a web projects tutorial series. So I've already made tutorials on Candy Crush, Wordle, 2048, Sudoku, and there are many tutorials to come. So if you're interested, please subscribe and take a look at my other tutorials. All right, so let's begin. Start by creating three files, index.html, puzzle.css, and puzzle.js. And you can see we have this images folder. You can find a link to my repo with the completed code down below on GitHub. Just download it and take the images folder out and put it in your own directory. And you can see we have our 25 images and they are named 1 through 25 for convenience. And you can see the final image if I open the window like this. So yeah. All right, so let's begin. Let's do doc type HTML, HTML. And then let's add a head. So in here, it's just standard stuff. So meta car set is equal to UTF eight. And then meta name equals viewport. We're going to do content is equal to width equals device width initial scale is equal to 1.0. And then let's give a title to our web page. So I'm just going to call it Avengers puzzle. And then let's link our style sheet and our JavaScript. So link rel equals style sheet. href is equal to puzzle.css. And then for our JavaScript, script source is equal to puzzle.js. And that's it for our head. All right, so let's work on our body. So I'm going to add a break line. And I'm going to add a div with an ID of board. So this is going to be our five by five board with the blank tiles. And I'm going to add a header. I'm going to use H2 to so make it a little smaller. And within here, I'm going to do turns. And I'm going to create a span with an ID of turns. And we'll set it to zero. So in my JavaScript, I'm going to access this tag by its ID turns and change the value every time we drag and drop a piece. And then finally, let's also add a div for our pieces. So pieces. And uh, yeah, that's all we need for our HTML. So if you open up the folder, you can see if I double click on the index, you can see this is what we have. Okay. So now let's style it so that we can see the board and uh, pieces. All right, so let's style the body first. I'm going to change the font to Arial Helvetica Sans Serif, and I'm going to align the text center. So it's going to align the text that says turns one, two, three, and so on, and it place in the center. All right, so now let's style our board. So board. I'm going to give it a width of 400 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. And I'm going to give it a border so you can see it. So two pixels solid, purple. 
All right, so if I refresh, you can see our board is over here. It has a border. So now let's place it in the center. So to do that, I'm just going to do margin zero auto and display flex, flex wrap, wrap. So margin zero auto is going to center the board and display flex is going to place all the tiles in order from left to right so that they don't stack in a single column. Within the board, we're going to have image tags. So I'm going to do board image. And this syntax is basically saying all the image tags within this board div is going to have this style. So I'm going to give each tag a width of 80 pixels and a height of 80 pixels. And I want to give it a border of 0.5 solid light blue. So the reason we're doing 80 is because it's a five by five board. So if the width and height are 400 pixels each, 400 divided by five is 80. So we have 80 pixels times 80 pixels for each tile. Now the thing here is because of the border, since it's adding 0.5 on each side, left and right and top and bottom, totaling of one pixel extra, we need to deduct that from the width and height so that it stays in line in that row. Because remember, we declared the width as 400 pixels. Together, this would be 81. So this would be 81 times 5. So we want it to be 80 times 5. So we're going to do 79 and 79. All right, so now let's do the same for our pieces area. So I'm going to do pieces. And we're going to give it a width of 1040 pixels and a height of 160 pixels. So similarly, each tile is going to be 80 by 80. So here we're going to have two rows because 80 times 2 is 160. And over here, we're going to have 13 columns because 13 times 80 gives you 1040. And so within here, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this and copy and paste it here. So we have a border and we want to also center that pieces area and keep our tiles uh, displayed from left to right in line. Okay. And same thing, we're going to just copy and paste this for our board. So change this to pieces. So all image tags within pieces is going to have this width and height and this border. Okay. So now if I refresh, you can see we have our board and we have the pieces that would be here. Okay. All right. So let's start working on our JavaScript. So I'm going to do rows equals five and columns equal five. And I'm going to create two variables, one for current tile and the other for other tile. And the reason is because one of them will reference the tile that you click to drag and the other one will be the tile that you're trying to swap with. So we need two of them so that we can swap with two tiles. And then I'm going to create a variable turns. So this will keep track of the number of turns and we start with zero. So when the window loads, I'm going to do window.onload equals function. And I'm going to initialize the board here. So by board, I mean the five by five game board. So I'm going to do for let r equals zero r less than rows, r plus plus, or let c equal zero, c less than columns, c plus plus. I'm going to create a tile. So this is going to be an image tag. So document that create element img. So what we just did is create an image tag. And then I'm going to take this tile and give it a source. So this image tag is going to have a source of dot slash images folder blank dot JPEG. So if you go and open up the images folder, you can see we have two images down here, blank and blank two. One is white and one is black. These will be the dummy images for our board because the board is full of image tags. We want to have a dummy image so that it would blend in with the background. So you can choose a white background or a black background, or you can choose a different color. I'm just going to leave a white or black tile here. And if I didn't have an image source, it would just show that icon 
where it says uh, image not found. So if I were to set it to a blank string, it's going to say image source not found and it will show that icon and we don't want that. So that's why I'm going to use a dummy blank image. So afterwards, I'm going to do document dot get element by D board and I'm going to append that tile. All right, so if I refresh, you can see I have all the images here and it's kind of hard to tell because the background's white and the image is also white, but you know they're there because of the border. If I didn't have the images, then it would have just been no border and nothing. It would be completely empty. And you can also just set it to blank two, which is the black image. So if I refresh this, you can see we have our images here. Okay but I'm just going to stick with the white blank image. All right, so now that we created our five by five board, let's also populate all the images into our pieces area. So I'm going to create a variable and assign it an array. And I'm going to do for let i equals one, i less than or equal to rows times columns, which is five times five. So that's 25 and then i plus plus. We're going to do pieces dot push i dot to string because we want a string instead of an int. So it's going to put one to twenty five in to the array, and this corresponds to the puzzle images names. So it's what you see over here. So that's why I named it one through twenty five for convenience. And then now let's populate all the images onto our board. So it's going to be the same thing that I did here except it's going to be for let i go zero i less than pieces dot length i plus plus i'm going to create a tile so document dot create element image tag and we're going to set tile dot source equal to images folder slash plus pieces of i and actually almost forgot do not forget the file extension okay and then i'm going to do document not get element by d pieces and we're going to append tile all right so now if i refresh you can see we have our image tiles here now you can see that because we did from 1 through 25 the images are actually in order so i can just do this and this and this and you can see this isn't really fun because it kind of just gives the solution away so let's shuffle this array before we populate the images into the pieces div so one way to shuffle is to just reverse it so if i did pieces dot reverse and i refresh you can see it's a little harder to tell what the solution is but we want to shuffle it even more so let's shuffle it so to shuffle it I'm going to do for let i go zero, i less than pieces dot length, i plus plus. So I'm going to go through each piece in the array and I'm going to get a random integer. So let j is equal to math dot floor, math dot random times pieces dot length. So as I iterate through the pieces array, I'm going to randomly get an integer, which is index j, and swap it with this current image. So I'm going to do let temp equal to pieces of i, pieces of i equal to pieces of j, and pieces of j will assign it back temp. So the original image for index i. Okay, so this is the swap. So now if I refresh, over and over, you can see the order changes every time. All right, so now that we have our 5x5 board and our image pieces over here, let's create the drag and drop functionality, okay? So over here, I'm going to create the drag and drop functionality. So we need to create several event listeners. So I'm going to do add event listener drag start. And I'm going to create a function called drag start. And I'm going to create another event listener, drag over. And another one, 
drag enter. Drag leave. Drop. And drag end. We have these six event listeners. So when it detects a drag start, it's going to call a function that we define called drag start. Same thing, drag over. It's going to call a function that we define called drag over. So what is this process? So drag and drop is a multi-step process. So drag start is when you click on an image to drag. So that's going to be the start of the drag process. Drag over is going to be when you drag an image. So drag start is when you click on the image. While you're clicking on the image and you're moving the mouse, that is drag over. Drag enter is going to be when you're dragging an image into another one. Drag leave is when you're dragging an image away from another one. Drag drop is when you drop the image that you're dragging onto another one. So drop an image onto another one. And drag n is after you complete it, drag drop. So after you complete it, drag drop, what do you do? So in our drag n, we're going to swap those two images. So just to give you an example, when I click on this image, this is drag start, then I drag over, and this 5x5 board is actually a board of images. They're just blank white images. So when I enter one, this is drag enter, and then I can also drag leave. This is drag enter, drag leave, and when I drag enter, I can drop it, and when I drop it, it calls drag end. So drag end is going to swap this with this blank image. So again, drag start, drag over, drag enter, drag drop, and drag end. All right, so let's copy and paste this and assign the event listener to the white tiles as well. Highlight this, press tab, backspace on this. Let's create some space here. Okay, so now all I need to do is define these six functions. So here I'm going to do drag tiles. So first one is drag start. So when you click on an image that is drag start, I'm going to do cur tile is equal to this. So this refers to image that was clicked on for dragging. And then we have drag over. So don't worry about this for now. I'm just going to do e.prevent default. We're not going to define anything here between these intermediate steps. We only care about drag start, drop, and end but we still need these functions. So I'm just going to leave this here. So drag enter, same thing. And then drag leave, I'm just gonna leave this here, empty. And then drag drop. So this is going to be other tile is equal to this. So this refers to image that is being dropped on. Okay, so drag start, this refers to the image you're dragging and drag drop, this refers to the image that is being dropped on. So now in drag end, after the multi-step process is completed, I'm going to do let cur image equal to cur tile dot source let other image equal to other tile dot source and I'm going to swap them. So cur tile dot source is other image and other tile dot source is cur image. And while I'm at it, I'm going to increment the turns by one and do document dot get element by D turns, which is that span in our HTML. So it's this, I'm going to update the text, so inner text, and set it to turns. 
All right, so now if I refresh and I try to drag an image, uh, hmm, maybe there's an error. So let's go back and check. Uh, oh, this should be drag end. So it should be all lowercase. So let's also fix it here. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see I can drag the images. Okay, so the turns increment, and I can swap the ones on the board like this. I can also swap like this. Okay, now there's one issue and that is I can take a white image, the blank image, and swap it with a puzzle image, which is not something we want to do because that means I can take this blank image and swap it with another blank image like this. So this should not be allowed. So to fix that, I'm going to do if cur tile dot source that includes blank, meaning that there's blank in its image name, I'm going to return. So I'm not going to swap at all, and I'm not going to increase the turns by one. All right, so now if I refresh and I try to swap two white images, you can see it doesn't work. Okay, so we have our fully functional puzzle game. And it's playable. And yeah, so let me know what you thought about the tutorial. And if you enjoyed it and you learned something new, please consider subscribing. And yeah, uh, I guess you can stick around and see how long it takes me to solve this puzzle. So this goes here. Okay. Uh, where does this one go? Here. All right. Uh, I think it goes here, right? Okay. Uh, I don't know where this one goes. Uh, where does she go? Here? Okay, maybe here. Okay, something like this? No? Oh, okay, that looks right. Okay, whose head is this? I'm just gonna leave that there. Oh, okay, that's somebody's head. Okay. Uh, okay. This side. Okay, this one goes here. Alright, so we have completed our puzzle game, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.